Helen is a 65 year old woman. She is a little overweight. She has not had menses for the last 15 years, but in the last few days she has begun to smear again and she has worried. Will these blood stains from Helen be part of a uterine cancer? An important clarification. Let's talk about uterine cancer, also called endometrial cancer or cancer of the uterus. It is a cancer other than cervical cancer or cancer of the cervix, which we have discussed in another video of this series of cancer symptoms. Watch the full video and learn how to distinguish the symptoms of uterine cancer, which will avoid many scares. Go for it! Before entering into matter, let us avoid panic with this information. Only 10 to 15% of women who have a vaginal bleeding after menopause will have such bleeding caused by a uterine cancer. In other words, 9 out of 10 hemorrhages after menopause are not cancerous. Let's make it clear so no one gets nervous just starting. Now let's get into the symptoms of uterine cancer. If it is limited to the uterus, there might be several ways of presenting. Let's look at them one by one. Situation 1. Without symptoms, the gynecologist detects uterine cancer in the consult. In women who do their regular checkups, sometimes their gynecologist observes on the ultrasound a thickening of the inner layer of the uterus, the endometrium. He may even find a polyp. They may be signs of a uterine cancer, but if they are, as it has not yet given symptoms, it has been diagnosed very early and will usually heal. Situation 2. Vaginal bleeding in a woman after menopause. The most frequent symptom of uterine cancer that has not yet spread outside it is vaginal bleeding in a woman who has already passed menopause. This symptom is the form of presentation of a uterine cancer in 8 out of 10 women who suffer from this tumor. How is this bleeding? The form of this bleeding usually reminds the woman of her menses, although the amount of blood lost is usually smaller and the duration of bleeding is usually shorter. Situation 3. The woman has heaviness and dull pain in the pelvis. When uterine cancer is already large, the woman may feel a sensation of occupation in the pelvis. It is a very non-specific sensation, similar to when you have chronic constipation or when you have an inflammatory pelvic disease. Situation 4. Uterine cancer grows forward and compresses the bladder. If the tumor grows large and forward, it can go towards the bladder. If it pushes bladder's wall, there is no problem. If it infiltrates and ruptures it, blood might appear in the urine, but that only occurs in very advanced tumors. Before breaking bladder's wall, uterine cancer can cause the crash of the entry of one or both tubes that carry urine from the kidneys. That is why the pressure increases in the kidney or the kidneys and hydronephrosis occurs. If we do not realize this in time, we may lose a kidney or both. Situation 5. Uterine cancer grows backwards and compresses the large intestine. If uterine cancer prefers to grow backwards, of its posterior neighbors are the rectum and sigmoid colon, the final sections of the large intestine where stool are stored before being expelled by the anus, if the tumor pushes them, makes the transit of the feces more difficult, 
which favors the appearance of constipation. It is very rare that the constipation of a postmenopausal woman is motivated by a uterine cancer, but you have to be alert to other symptoms to diagnose uterine cancer as soon as possible. We have already seen symptoms due to uterine cancer, but what happens when the tumor escapes from the uterus, either through the lymphatic system or through the blood? Let's go see it. When the tumor is already outside the uterus, it may be because it has followed two different paths, the lymphatic vessels or the blood. Let's see where each of them leads. Situation 1. Uterine cancer has escaped through the lymphatic vessels. Uterine cancer can exit the uterus into the lymphatic chains of the pelvis. These lymph nodes full of tumor cells usually do not cause symptoms, besides emphasizing the heaviness in the pelvis that we discussed when the uterine cancer was very large. Very rarely, when there is a large involvement of the lymph nodes, especially on one side of the pelvis, the lymphatic fluid can be interrupted in the vessels and ganglia. Then, these liquids will remain in the growing leg and the leg will grow. This is called lymphedema. Situation 2. Uterine cancer has escaped through the blood. When cancer cells enter the blood because they break a blood vessel close to the tumor, these cells travel throughout the body and can be established in places where, because of their special conditions, they like to stay and live. In the case of uterine cancer, the most frequent sites where metastases appear are Lungs When tumor cells stay within the lungs, they often make separate groups with the appearance of multiple metastases over time. If they override the function of the lung, they can cause shortness of breath, a symptom called dyspnea. If they touch a respiratory tube, the bronchi, they irritate it, producing a very annoying dry cough. If they are placed near a blood vessel, they can break it, spreading some blood with that cough. The liver. When uterine cancer cells settle in the liver, they begin to grow disorderly and begin to crush their cells. If they break them, the contents of these liver cells, which are the transaminases, will be shed into the blood, increasing their levels. We detect that in a blood test. If they compress the small channels inside the liver that transport bile, it may accumulate and the person will become yellow, a phenomenon called jaundice. Bone if uterine cancer cells grow inside the bone, when the metastasis becomes very large, the coating that covers the bone can be broken. This membrane, the periosteum, has a lot of sensitivity. Its breaking will cause pain. This growth compromises the strength of the bone and, especially if it is a bone that has to carry weight, it can break. A specific case of bone metastasis occurs when the vertebrae are affected. It can cause back pain and even when the vertebra breaks it can produce neurological symptoms that are included in the spinal cord compression syndrome. As you can see, uterine cancer can lead to many signs and symptoms. Let's summarize them so that they are very clear to us. To summarize all the symptoms that uterine cancer can produce. In the uterus itself, the most frequent symptom is the presence of a vaginal bleeding in a woman who has already passed the menopause. Less frequently, women can suffer. Sensation of heaviness and dull pain in the pelvis. 
hydronephrosis due to crushing of a ureter, chronic progressive constipation if the tumor grows backwards. In lymphatic drainage regions, the most frequent situation is that it does not produce any symptoms. Less frequently will appear the sensation of heaviness in the pelvis or a lymphedema. In the rest of the body, the most frequent symptoms are cough, hemoptysis or dyspnea if the metastases are pulmonary, increased transaminases or jaundice if the liver is affected, or bone pain or fractures if there is bone involvement. Knowing the symptoms of uterine cancer is very important. Do not forget to carry out the early diagnostic tests of this tumor that your doctor prescribes you. Detecting uterine cancer as soon as possible is the best way to beat it.